party plan, friends. Welcome to the Fiella Family Farm. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. So we are at Fiella Farm. If you listen to the podcast, you know that this is the front yard of my mom's house in the suburbs of New York City. And every year she does the most amazing edible landscaping. And I thought it would be fun to once a month document how this farm blooms and grows throughout the growing season. So mom, welcome to the Bloom and Grow YouTube show. So nice to be here with you. So if you listen to the podcast that accompanies this video, mom gives her 10 tips to how to do edible landscaping and tips for beginning gardeners. And the biggest thing she talked about was that you have to protect yourself when you're in the garden. So I wanted us to show you what we're wearing. Your feet are covered, your toes are not exposed. Then you've got tube socks that are, your pants are tucked into, so no soil's getting in there. Then you've got long pants, long sleeve shirt, your gloves are tucked into your, um, your long sleeves are tucked into your gloves and, mom, what is this technique you call it? We double glove in our garden, just like in an operating room. Double glove, so you put a latex glove or a thinner glove inside your gardening glove. We've got a hat that's gonna protect the back of our necks and the front of our faces. We've tipped them back so you can see our face. And then we've got sunglasses protect our eyes from any dirt or bugs that might fly in them. So mom, why is it so important to cover up when you're in the garden? Well, the garden is a dangerous place. It's dirt. It's filled with microbes. It's filled with insects. Um, and it's filled with plants that are poisonous and can bite you also, like poison ivy or some kind of plants you might have an allergic reaction to. So it's always best to create a barrier between you and your garden when you work in the garden. You heard that first here at Biella Farm. So it's May 2nd right now. In New York, you don't plant the majority of your garden before May, uh, before Mother's Day, mid-May. So as I'm gonna do monthly installments on the YouTube show, we wanted to show you what the garden looks like before it gets into full farm mode. So mom has something in bloom in every season. Right now, as you can see, there's probably like 500 daffodils. How many daffodils are in bloom uh, right now? 680 at last count. Yeah, amazing. So there's a ton of daffodils. She plants her seasons, so there's always something to be featured. Um, so I figured what better way to see kind of the more bare bones of the garden than now before we put all of the edible landscaping in. So mom, why don't we head over to the germination station first and you can take us through each bed and what your plans are for the season. Um, before we do that, I will take you over to my little workspace. <laughs> so this is the makeshift garden shed. This is my garden shed. Um, I like this place because I get to look at my beautiful garden. It gives me very creative thoughts and I begin to work. Now this year I've started you know, we're stuck in the house with coronavirus and I have all these plastic containers that are accumulating from salads and eggs and um, other things. So I've decided to repurpose them. They're, they generally have holes in them, but if not, I'll take a pair of scissors and just pop some holes at the bottom and I'll put a little dirt in it. I then plant this with seeds and I cover it up keep it nice and warm. I wet it, I cover it up, and then I just put it in my garden and let nature do its thing. So the plastic container of the salad holds the moisture in and then the sun helps with keeping the soil mo moist. So you're essentially making a germination station just on your front lawn in the sun sign. Right. And the other thing that you could do, if you don't have a lot of money to buy um, fancy pots, but you're going and getting all these paper bags, you make a hole at the bottom of the bag. I didn't realize she was gonna be ready with demonstrations. This is fabulous. You cut the top of the bag. You put dirt in the bag. And now you have a pot. She cut little holes in it. And the cool thing that is, this is biodegradable. And when the newspaper or the paper bag disintegrates, it's actually really good for the soil. Um, also wanted to point out that this is a sleigh. <laughs> if you're worried about living on a budget, this is a sleigh turned upside down on top, on top of, of a garbage, garbage <laughs> dump. And this lives out here 
for the summer season. So don't be intimidated. You don't need fancy things to start gardening. So before we do the tour, I want you guys to see the incredibly economically friendly way my mom germinates all of her seeds. Um, you do a mixture of seeds that you do that you germinate and then seedlings that you buy. But this is where the magic happens for the garden. Okay. So I do start with little plants that are about two inches tall that I'll get at Home Depot at the beginning of the year. And I'll plant them with different color schemes in mind. And if you look down, you'll see there's red leaf lettuce, there's iceberg lettuce, there's romaine lettuce. And you plant them with different colors in mind so that you'll have a different... Um, beautiful uh, texture of, beautiful of colors. Beautiful texture of color and... A palette is the word we're looking for. A beautiful palette <laughs> of color and texture also. In between, in between my red leaf lettuce, my green leaf lettuce, I now have planted seeds. The seeds are planted for the next generation of plants. Here's two more that I have under here. Um, the next generation of plants have sprouted. Over here, they seem to be happiest. Yeah. If you look over here, you'll see that the next generation of romaine has sprouted. And it's so, super smart because as these grow and you start to harvest, then these guys will be coming up. And will you thin these out? Yes, okay. absolutely. I just put the seeds in. You know, you get a pack of seeds, there's probably 200 seeds in there. Maybe 50 will germinate. You never know how much is gonna germinate. Maybe 200 are gonna germinate. Maybe three will germinate. You never know what this, what kind of stress that seed packet has been through by the time it got from the, the grower to the store. So plant it all, pick it, uh, take it out when it gets big enough to move and then replant it in a different place. Let's talk about my germination station. Let's talk about it. Here's Chinese cabbage. I've never grown Chinese cabbage before, but I got this beautiful salad thing that has perforations in it. I put a little bit of dirt, I put a pack of seeds in, and I have germinated all this Chinese cabbage. And then you can just go through it, thin it, and then transplant when it's time, right? So I plant the seeds, I wet it, I close it, now, I keep it outside. You know, it's been outside in April. Some nights are cold, some nights are warm, but this plastic protects it, protects it from the heat to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And also, when the sun shines on it, it creates heat and humidity inside, so mm -hmm. it's always the perfect little temperature. So I'm loving my plastic garden. It's so funny because you hear all of these crazy ways that people germinate seeds indoors. You put seeds on a heating pad and in these fancy seed starters and under these fancy grow lights and you're just germinating seeds in old salad containers Here's in spinach. the sun. Here's spinach. Yeah, it's awesome. So these seeds will go along my spinach garden here in the back mm -hmm. once they're a little bit bigger. And I kind of tell you, I like the way they're germinating in the plastic better than they're germinating in the dirt. Totally. So here's another thing. It becomes a science experiment on what you like on how it germinates. Now, over here, I try germinating kale in these pads. But you know what? For some reason, the seeds, I mean, some have germinated. But this has been three weeks now. Uh, 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 this and isn't she really sticks, moving. Everything she germinates, she sticks the packet in wherever right. it's germinating so you don't forget what you've germinated, right. which, is in, which is very important. Right. So this is going to be beautiful kale. It's going to be blue, blue kale. And I'm going to put it up here. It's going to be gorgeous. So this is the tomato hedge that we talk about in the podcast. This is going to be completely transformed in the summer. Tomato plants will go from here to there and they'll be way taller than us. How many varieties do you normally plant? I usually have about four varieties of cherries mm -hmm. and then four varieties of tomatoes, maybe 20. But it is total. a hedge, hedge of, tomatoes. of tomatoes. So this is a perfect example of an edible landscaping. She found that there was a little space in between the um, plantings oh, that goodness. existed here and the house, so she decided, hey, it gets direct sunlight, right. so let's make something of it. So see how much space it is between the, the azalea plants and me, it was about four feet. 
So I took 10 inches of this four feet and I create a tomato garden. And it's amazing. And it mixes in with all of the natural planting. So people don't even know that it's really tomato. I mean, I don't think people on the street would even no, understand that it's tomatoes. Tomato no. And yeah. we're eating tomatoes all summer long. Yeah. Let's go to the herb garden. Okay, let's go to the herb garden. Okay, so what do we have in the herb garden? Okay, so my herb garden begins over here at the beginning of the curb to my front steps. I have two rosemary plants that are very happy in this spot here. They're catching full sun. Here I have dill, and it seems very happy too. It's followed by thyme, 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 and then we have tarragon, which came back naturally over here, which I'm thrilled to see. You'll notice that I have hyacinths planted here in the area because I like the smell of hyacinths when I open the front door. So my tarragon has created a woody stem over the winter and I have a lot of little tarragon um, plants coming up from the tarragon here. There's some beautiful thyme over here, more thyme. This is pretty much thyme on this side. This is what the woody stem looks like for these um, these herbs that, that go over the winter. This is what the woody stem looks like. And then they'll shoot, they'll shoot little leaves. And by the end of this, like this has already gone over its woody stem. It'll look like this in a couple of weeks. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. So it looked like this a few weeks ago, and then it came back and it looked like this. So that's the beauty of a nice plant. Okay, on this side of the garden, I planted mint. Mm -hmm. Invasive mint. Don't plant mint in the ground. It'll Only in containers. All over. Yeah. Only in a container. But I put a plant here thinking, okay, nothing grows over here next to the drain pipe. Mint will grow. Mint ran from here all the way down here and it overran my oregano plants. So I moved oregano down the block. So there's a lot of mint here. You have to be careful when you plant mint Mint looks a lot like oregano. Yeah, sometimes we have to like pinch and smell before we you harvest. You have to pinch and smell. One day I was making sauce, I put oregano in it, and instead it was mint. <laughs> okay, then I got sage. I have my sage clustered together here. A lot of sage. And I got a tree growing in the middle of my sage plants. Constantly weeding. Constantly and weeding. And she actually has sage that she transplanted from my grandmother's garden in Queens. So you've had this sage for how many years? Uh, this sage has been growing for over 50 years. Yeah, 50 year old sage. Um, heirloom sage, who heirloom knew there are sage. heirloom herbs. And some, this too. Yeah. This big leaf sage. This is oregano that came back from last year. And then we'll beef this up in a few weeks as well right. with some basil and right. other stuff. Other oregano, animals. cilantro, parsley, and then why don't we go into the bean patch since we're pretty okay. much there. So this is gonna be my bean patch and zucchini patch this year. You can see this whole section that there's nothing in yet. Nothing in. That gets all planted up, all sorts of string beans, all sorts of bush beans. What else do you? So I put cauliflower. So here's my cauliflower plants. I mm -hmm. bought them two weeks ago. They're not happy. I gotta give them some water. But I bought these cauliflower plants. They were very small. Cauliflowers make a beautiful flower. When cauliflower is in bloom and creates the vegetable on top, you don't even want to cut the vegetable to eat it because it's gorgeous. Yeah, we really don't even eat the cauliflower. We just use yeah. it more decoratively. Last year I had purple cauliflower and white cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Then I got some wild kale again. Here's my beans. They started. Some of my beans started. Now beans are an interesting thing. I did use these beans were germinated in the house where you get the little bean that splits in half and I put in the dirt so they're coming up. Last year I took a bag of black beans that I bought in the store and I germinated them and I threw them along here with cranberry beans I bought in the store. I had the most amazing beans. I had thousands and had thousands so beans. of beans. All different types. Oh my god. Yellow string beans, green string beans, cranberry beans, black beans, thousands of beans. A lot of beans. Here. So, the common pest that every gardener hates besides squirrel and deer is weeds. Yeah. Weeds in bloom is what we have here. It's spring 
and the garden has been, the dirt has been ameliorated. I've given it compost, I've given it topsoil, I've given it pea moss. It's very healthy, it's very happy, and the weeds know it. So the weeds come and they invade my garden. Last week, before Maria said we were gonna come over, I came and I dug a bag of weeds out of this garden. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've created a rock garden here because uh, it, this is a tough place to grow anything because I've got these trees and I got a lot of superficial roots. But weeds, they don't need much to grow. Yeah. They need a little They're drop. Not picky. They need a drop of dirt and they will grow. So in here, we have very healthy weeds. I think they're not only here. do we have weeds, we have weeds in bloom. I'm leaving the weeds in bloom over here. We're gonna enjoy their flowers and then they're gonna we're gonna rip flowers. them out. I have white flowers, yellow flowers, I have yellow flowers, and if you come down here, I got these tiny, tiny, tiny little, little blue white flowers. flowers. Yeah, they're really beautiful. I have um, vinca vine and ivy all over the place. Ivy is like a weed to me now too. I know the ivy. The ivy grows up the tree to climb up the tree to photosynthesize, but it's also been creeping through the garden. So we're right. gonna have to figure that out. Right. So weeds in bloom are a big pest to a real gardener. And it's gonna have back-breaking work because that you just have to pull. So this is, I think, my favorite part of the garden for my mom. It will completely transform over the course of the summer because this is the sunflower patch. And last year, mom, how many sunflowers did you have? Uh, I bloomed over 485 sunflowers. So it is truly the most unbelievable thing. You like to say that it, it makes your garden the south of France, right? Yes, this is my south of France garden. But something that I want to draw attention to is even though this area of the garden and the edible area of the garden is highlighted towards the end of the summer, she still has beautiful perennials. plants that have beautiful perennials beautiful plants and bulbs that are coming up. So even in the kind of quote unquote off season, it's still really beautiful and has this beautiful big old rock in it. Um, but I can't wait to show you in a few months what this will look like. So take a snapshot, remember it, and we'll compare it in a few months. So the trick, the secret to my mom's garden is compost from the dump. The people at the dump know my mom, literally, <laughs> She talks about it on the podcast, but she goes to the dump and she fills bags, garbage bags full of compost and then spreads them all over the garden. Like that. Like that. Do you like pick it up and sprinkle it around after? No, we're going to rototill it. Oh, okay. So make sure you're subscribed because we're going to be doing probably monthly garden updates with my mom. Do you have anything you want to say to the followers? Oh, I love seeing everyone. And I'm so glad you're watching Maria's podcast. And I uh, hope this helps you in your garden journey. It's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for you to get your hands in the dirt. And it's good for your head. It's good for your heart. And it's good for your ass. <laughs> so keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs> Nailed it. High five. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do.